Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's bright and early, daily discipline, mind, body, and soul. This is how we get through. Let's talk about nostalgia a little bit. Let's just philosophize. I think we all understand nostalgia and you have this memory, even if it may not be particularly accurate. Sometimes a nostalgic memory, nostalgia can be clouded and vague and not really of what happened, but you have a twisted memory of it. That's okay. But we understand what it is. You may be, uh, you have nostalgia for your childhood, for the town that you grew up in, whatever. We understand that. And it's always a better time, a perceived better time. A more peaceful time, a happier time. But is it possible to have nostalgia for a worse time? You're nostalgic for a much worse time, for trauma. It's weird to have attachment to trauma. And why would we do this to ourselves? Why would we have some sort of affectionate memory towards a part of our past that was struggle and hard, traumatic, awful even? Why would you possibly want that again? What could you see in that that would be positive in any way that would be something to to fantasize about, to, to, to want. Because isn't that what nostalgia is? If, if you try to analyze it, like what is it? What are you actually experiencing right now? Is it just simply a fond memory? People who engage in nostalgia typically have a hole in their life in the present that they're trying to navigate around and they fill that hole with memories of the past, elements of the past. So you may feel lonely and then you get very nostalgic about a past relationship or a past town, a past group of friends, a past time when you felt love. Oftentimes, if a man, men particularly engage in nostalgia, it's been studied, men like to think about nostalgia, nostalgic times more than women. Those Norman Rockwell paintings, those were all kind of this fantasy nostalgia of an America that never existed. And Mostly men love those paintings. <laughs> but I'll tell you about this weird phenomenon that I've experienced within myself many times over the last 20 years, particularly, where I've felt nostalgic towards a much worse time in my life. And it's weird, even myself, I wonder, what the hell's up with that? Why would you want to go back to that? And I realize, a part of me realizes that you can't go back in time. We don't have time machines. And even if I could, I wouldn't go back. I'm not stupid. I remember the bad things that happened during that time period. But I somehow remember the good things more. So back in 1992, I guess it was, I moved down to a south side neighborhood, Mexican barrio, beach flats, Sorano gang, connected with La MA, Mexican mafia. And very quickly, I became down with those guys. And within a year, they were pretty much my only friends. I had let, intentionally, it was my doing, uh, I let everybody else I knew go. I was done with civilians. I don't want to be around regular people no more. All I wanted to be around was my homeboys was the gang. That's it. I don't want to know anybody else. I don't want to have anybody else's friends. That's all I wanted. And it wasn't all roses, man. I mean, I was losing my mind steadily in this slow decline down into the abyss every day, getting worse and worse and worse and worse. More and more of a drug addict, more and more of an alcoholic, more and more of a womanizer and a psychopath and a violent criminal and impulsive person without thinking about my, my actions. And oh, I was just descending into madness, into a wild animal. And I don't have nostalgia about that. The nostalgia, because I've analyzed this, why? Why would I 
care about this gang. I've run with other gangs before. I, I ran with gangs since I was 10 years old. I moved all over the country. Gangs are tied into neighborhoods. So every time I would bounce into another bad neighborhood, I'd look for the fucking criminals and be like, hey, guys, <laughs> how you doing? No, it was the brotherhood. There's a platoon kind of vibe to being with the Serenios. I can't speak about Crips or Bloods or any of that kind of shit. I, I don't run with black gangs. You can say I'm racist. It's just the way California is. White boys don't run with black gangs in California. You don't have that kind of wigger, kind of weird bullshit like you have here in Florida. I see these little wigger dudes here in Florida all the time, man, and they trip me out because you don't really get cats like that in Southern California. N not in my experience. <laughs> And the Mexicans embraced me like nobody else has ever embraced me. They were more down for me, more loyal to me, nicer to me than anybody's ever been in my life, including my own family. If I was sitting on my front steps of my apartment building, which I did often, and say if I had a particularly mean look on my face, unhappy look, just my facial expression. Homies would come up, hey man, what's going on with you? Sit next to me, counsel me, whatever you need. You need pussy? We got it, we got you, man. You need some money? How much you need? Pull out some, some money. What do you need? Pay me back when you can. You need drugs? Here's some weed. Here's some coke. Don't worry about it, just take it. Whatever you need, you just need a, uh, someone to talk to, you need some food, you come over to my house, I'm gonna feed you. My wife is gonna make you a plate that's fucking four pounds. <laughs> You'll barely be able to finish it. Anything you need. You just want me to sit next to you, we can just sit here in silence? I'll do that too. I never had nobody treat me like this before in my life. I so desperately needed that. And the Serenios provided it for me. So it was, in my mind, that's what it was about. It was about that love. The shooting, the drugs, all that was just in the peripherals, man. That was extra. Now, you talk to some of these twisted La M.A. shot caller guys, and they're very manipulative, and they may have a different story on the Serenios street soldiers. They say, yeah, they're just our pawns. We use them to make our money. We send them to prison and put them on prison yards. I get it. I'm not stupid. But nonetheless, I have this very twisted, strange nostalgia for a really awful, awful time. And it's hard to shake off. I miss it. I find myself missing being part of the gang. And I have to slap myself out of it. I know, hey, that's stupid, man. How many murders I witnessed? Ugh. I'm done with that shit. I'm done with the violence. All those motherfuckers are dysfunctional weaklings. I'm not trying to be around people like that, but I still, there's this thread in me and I have to wonder, what is that? Is there something that's still missing inside of me? Is there something that, an area that still has a hole in it that I'm trying to fill, to fill with love? When you have this nostalgia for anything, whether it be good or bad. You want to analyze it. Don't get lost in it. Analyze it. And ask yourself, what is my mind trying to tell me? What is it that I need? Because nostalgia is based around a need. When you're feeling nostalgic, go into your Sherlock Holmes mode with your pipe and your magnifying glass and you're looking for clues. What is it that I need? Food for thought.